Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Dan Elman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING. Get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pass the Wyatt TV. We are fortunate enough today to have um, Mr. Jules Pitham with us from My Racehorse, but not just My Racehorse. Um, most of us here in the States are familiar with My Racehorse, but uh, they've been pretty successful, and they have now expanded and are expanding into the UK, and who knows in the future, maybe even other areas. We'll let Jules talk to us a little bit about that. Um, and about my racehorse. But Jules, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's a, it, it's a pleasure to have you, and I look forward to talking about this stuff with you. Thank you, John. Good morning, and thanks very much for having me on. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're at Newmarket right now, correct? We're at Newmarket today. It's the Craven meeting, start of the flat season. Uh, everyone's arriving. It's looking exciting. Yeah, no, it, it, it's super exciting. One, one, one difference, and there's, there, there's a lot of differences in, 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 in racing in the UK and the States, but your flat meet, um, your, your, your steeplechase meet gets started early, but your flat meet kind of gets started a little later than us. Like we're already, full, our Kentucky Derby prep races are pretty much done except for, for the Lexington, and I think it's the one remaining race, but we're kind of rolling a little sooner than you. You, you guys are first... First getting ramped up, ramped up now. So exciting times over there for sure, huh? Yeah, we just got through Cheltenham, which kind of signals the end of the jump season. And this right. really kicks off the flat season here. And then a thousand guineas and two thousand guineas coming up at the end of the month. Right. Um, and then before you know it, Royal Ascot's here and just th things start start really, really, really rolling. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan, a huge fan of UK racing. I, I watch it all throughout the year. Um, I, I, I love some of the meets over there, um, you, you know, New Market, Goodwood, uh, Royal Ascot, uh, 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 of course, but uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of UK racing and a big fan of a lot of those horses. And, and, and I'll tell you, watching the races as diligently as I do during the course of the year becomes a tremendous advantage when you guys ship over for some of the bigger races over here. Because not only do I know some of those horses, but I know some of the horses they competed against. Uh, and it's just a tremendous edge and really gives you a lot, a lot of insight. And uh, a lot of times I'll tell friends of mine, you know, this horse is really going to run big and probably win today. I'm like, you're crazy. And then after they win, they're like, how do you know these European horses? So well? I'm like, I watch their races. Yeah. It's good to hear you're a fan of UK and Irish. Well, I don't know if you follow the Irish racing too. I do, I do, I do. We have, we actually have a writer that writes um, about the Irish races for past the wire. So we, uh, yeah, we're, we 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 follow them. And we, I had Joseph O'Brien on the same show that you're on um, a couple of months back. It was a, a great guest as well. But let's get into my racehorse. Um, you know, m my racehorse. I, I don't ever remember. Uh, a, a partnership, if you want to call it that, or a an ownership experience type of, of group that came out of the box with the kind of success in the States that my racehorse did. I mean, they just came out with some, uh, I mean, a Kentucky Derby winner. Uh, you, you can't get much more uh, higher on the food chain than that. Um, how do you, how do you, what, what do you, what, what do you attribute to that, that, that to? Well, you know, there's an element of luck in getting into the right horse, right? I mean, For sure. You know, I mean, it's, that's racing. You, you know, if everyone could pick the best bloodstock, then 
there would be no competition. So, you know, we, we picked it right. Um, the horse did incredibly well. And it was a great ex experience for everybody. There were 5,000 people in that horse. We went on to win, as you know, the Kentucky Derby and the Breezer Cup Classic. And right. it burst us onto the scene and gave us a platform that has got us to this point. And, 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 and when did the plan to move into the UK? Uh, it's been, yeah. You know, I met uh, Michael Behrens, the chief exec and founder, a few years ago. And um, he's always been keen on the UK and Ireland. And, uh, I, you know, two or three years ago, they had to go away and build the tech. And uh, I said, Michael, I'm here. I'm ready for you whenever you're ready. It's a dream job for me. So he, he contacted right. me about a year ago. And we've been working in the background with all the regulatory uh, payments, all the things you can imagine that goes on behind the scenes to make it as seamless as possible when we, when we launch this week. Right. And, 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 and congratulations on, on that launch. And, and there is a lot of regulatory um, stuff that goes on behind the scenes because, I mean, here we have like, you know, the trade commissions and all, 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 of, all of those things. Is it similar over there? Do you have to be like, you know, registered, licensed, selling shares? Like what, what, what all goes into that? So, you know, it's fairly uh, strenuous in the US with uh, SEC regulation, as, right. as you know, John. So we went, we wanted to, you know, have the same model and the same level of scrutiny over ourselves um, in the UK and Ireland. So we went, our regulators called the FCA, Financial Conduct Authority. We went to okay. them and said, this is what we want to do. And they said, fantastic, looks great. We're going to give you an exemption under what's called enjoyment of property. So we're exempted from regulation in the UK, which is, which is, helpful because you don't want to you don't want to create barriers to entry and in ireland the central bank of ireland said something very similar so we're free to operate okay. in an unregulated environment but we are regulated by the rules of racing from the bha uh, british horse racing authority and uh, right. horse racing ireland now how do the how do the mechanics work in in in, in the uk um i i i, I want to buy I'm, I'm i'm a citizen of the uk um or do i even have to be a citizen could someone like myself become attracted to a horse in the UK that you guys are offering and buy shares in that? Or do I have to be a citizen of the UK? And walk me through the process. I like a horse in the UK. I want to buy some shares. How, how, how do I go about it? Walk me through the process. So you, you just log on to um, myracehorse.com if you're in the UK and Ireland. That will direct you, direct you to our website. You can look at our bloodstock that we have available right now. And you go through the buy process. I'm sorry to report, John, that as a US citizen, you can't buy in the UK right now. You okay. know, we plan to have a, you can imagine a matrix around the world with all the venues sure. race. You can, and when we get over those regulations, you know, we really hope US citizens will be able to buy, you know, UK bloodstock. Because as you mentioned, it's so significant in you know, the Royal Ascot, the Benz and the Goodwood. And we will get there. I'm not going to say right. when. We hope to have you as a fraction owner in the UK very soon, John. Well, the good news is for anybody in the States that is interested, um, my race course has, a, you know, has offerings here all the time and they compete at some of the highest levels. So it's not like, you know, you're locked out in the US. It's, it started in the US and they're, like you said, a Derby and Breeders' Cup Classic winner. So they've already been at the highest stage. But I'm just talking, you know, someone like me that's so attractive to the racing and the meets over there. Um, and some of the outfits over there, uh, I just thought it would be a great opportunity to expose more U.S. people to some, you know, some of the some of the racing over there in Europe. It's absolutely within our plans, John. And as soon as we get it sorted, we'll be making that public to you know there all our owners and registered owners, owners in the U.S. So uh, you know, kind of watch this space, John. But we'll get there for all the yeah, reasons. No, I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you will. You guys have moved really, really fast with a, a, an enormous amount of success. Now, with success, um, especially in today's day of social media, comes scrutiny. And, 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 and I don't mean the kind of scrutiny from regulatory authorities. I mean scrutiny from just people that, you know, are watching the sport and really don't know or understand the mechanisms. And I'll tell you why I put it that way. There were a lot of complaints about my racehorse's structure. And the first thing I noticed about it was none of the people who complained were involved, okay? There were no people who bought shares that were unhappy and complaining about it, which I said, okay, well, that tells me something right then and there. They're, they're happy. They're enjoying their investment. Uh, and, you know, most of the people that complained were people who had no interest whatsoever 
And I seem to notice, didn't really understand the mechanisms or what it was about or what an ownership experience really was. And, and they were looking at it like a, uh, a hardcore money-making investment opportunity, which really is not what it is. Uh, so can you explain a little bit about the structure of my resource, what it, what it provides, and why it's a great value for what it does provide? Um, so the, the two words we use a lot internally is transparency and governance. So it's, our, it's up to us to make it really clear what you're buying. So I'm going to talk about the way we do that. So if we buy a horse for a quarter million dollars, that's the number of shares we syndicate to the value of $250,000. We never oversubscribe. And as you go through the process, you can see that broken down. And also, you know, what the training fees are, what our management and due diligence fee fees are. So you're right, John, anyone who's been through that process knows that, I've been through the buy process, can see that. And that's really important to us. And that's gonna play out at the end of 2022 when we launch secondary market. Because it's very easy to buy a share or a horse in the UK. The industry does a good job of you know, attracting people into the industry as buyers, but doesn't give you a much chance to sell that horse. You either sell all of it or none of it. And do you go on that journey and risk you've got a group one on your hands or, or, or sell it thinking, oh, I missed a chance, it becomes a group one and you've missed out. So we're gonna create a secondary market in those shares. So we'll create a real value for those shares over time. Some will go up in value and some will go down, but that right. level of transparency um, allowing you to see exactly the value of the bloodstock that you own and a chance to make money on the journey, perhaps sell half of your shares, keep some in. Um, we've got so much good feedback from the industry about the, uh, the benefits uh, and, and demand for it. That's going to be really exciting. Right. And so, so, so there's going to come a point in the future where if, 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 if I, and we'll use, we'll, we'll, we'll use Authentic as an example because he's, you know, just so accomplished and, you know, hit the, those high notes of, of, of success. But if I was fortunate enough to buy an Authentic, okay, um, there's going to come a point where if I wanted to after the Derby and he was heading for the Breeders' Cup Classic, I can sell some of my shares and actually make a profit on, on, on that. Yeah. So I think it's a good example because in order to achieve that, you've got to create liquidity. And if you've got, we have five, I have 5,000 owners in uh, Authentic. So you've got to have motivated buyers and motivated sellers. So we'll right. provide a matching service, matching new owners, new buyers, with people who perhaps think the horse is worth more. And if they bought the whole the share for $100, they might offer it for sale for $200. And if there's right. people interested and think he's going to win uh, uh, the Breeders' Cup, then they'll be buying in. And the market will create itself by that matching process. And liquidity will grow over time. But, uh, you know, it's exciting. We've got, you know, people are really, really interested to see that. And how that's going to now, work. When, when, when a horse achieves that kind of success, okay, and becomes a, 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 a high valued stud prospect, do the people that own shares benefit from that at all? How does that, that work for them? Absolutely. So, whenever anyone anywhere around the world, my resource, if you buy a share of a horse, you are into the prize money that's yours as if, as if you're a regular owner, because you are a regular owner. You have stallion fees, breeding rights. They're all yours. So the market will work out what's the future value of those stallion rights from Authentic, and that will create the price. And, you know, it'll probably go, it'll be go significantly up from the price at which people originally purchased that share. All things being equal, because we know markets, you know, always come to the right fundamental values over time. Um, and that, that's, we can see that happening, yeah. Right. Now, there, there, there was a... a you know, and, and, and only because I want to keep it transparent and I want to understand and I want people who watch to understand. There was a lot of talk about, oh, well, they, 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 they inflate, you know, my rice host inflates the values of, 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 the, of the horses. Um, to talk a little bit about how that works. I think everybody understands management fees and training fees and, and, and all of that kind of stuff because I'm, I'm not familiar with one syndicate and syndicates are a, a big part of the game today. You know what I mean? They, they, they minimize the risk. They bring in, you know, people into the game that might have never been able to get into the game. And they're an important part of growing the ownership side of the sport. Um, yeah. But I don't know one that doesn't have management and training fees. Um, sure. So I think people understand that. But talk about 
um, when people say, oh, well, they inflate the price and they make it so it's, it's impossible for the investors to make money. Talk more about the structure and how, how that works. So um, I can tell you from my standpoint, anybody who works in my resource, we are absolutely not interested in inflating the price of bloodstock. It's not how we do it. It would be illegal anyway, under SEC regulations. Um, and as we, sorry to go back to secondary markets, but as that comes out over time, you know, it'll be obvious if you've, if you've sold more shares than the value of the horse, the price is gonna drop dramatically. And then right. it'll become obvious because the value of the horse will be, will be obvious because number of shares in issue times the price. And that'll be the value and the market will decide that. So absolutely, we, we, we don't do that. And also, you know, our obligations in uh, the, uh, the SEC level and in Australia, like with their regulator, is to publish um, our cap table, our shareholder table, showing number of shares outstanding. So I can guarantee you, John, it's not the case. You know, people talk and that's our job to educate them. That's not the case. Right. Um, I can tell you that that now. And we're going to, despite the fact we're unregulated in the UK, we're going to scrutinise ourselves and have that same process in the UK. So the British Horse Racing Authority is a regulator in, our, in the UK and we'll publish our shareholder table every week to them to start driving that transparency process. Um, right. it, that may become an obligation in future, but at the moment we want to create that transparency and that governance so that, so that when people do ask that tricky question, you know, we can answer it very clearly that that's not the case. Interesting. Um, who, who are going to be um, your trainers? Uh... In, in, in England and Ireland and uh, anywhere else that you, you, you plan to expand? So, uh, can't talk about other markets at the moment, but we've got plans outside of, in Europe as well. Let's, let's get to that when, we, when we're ready. So we're starting with um, three, John Gosden, uh, Andrew Balding, and uh, Joseph O'Brien. Have you heard of those well, guys, John? I've heard of them, yeah, actually. <laughs> so you, um, you, 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 you guys, similar to the US model, um, you like to go right to the top. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get to the top, stay at the top, John. That's what always, always said we're going to do around the globe, and that's the way we've done it in the UK. And we've had great support from Joseph, Andrew, and John. They really get it. And, you know, they love right. racing. And this gets more people racing, more ownership. What's not to like about it? Right. No, I, I, I listen, I always liked it, the idea. And one of my biggest mistakes in racing was when it first came out, I actually toyed with the idea of buying a share in Authentic, okay? Uh, a couple of shares in Authentic. And I didn't because I've got a million things going on and I can barely remember that I, I, I had to set five reminders for our appointment today because I just got so many things going on that if I miss four of them, I wind up not on, 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 on the call with you. And I never did it. And after he won the Derby, I'm like, oh man, I said, I, do I wish I would do that? Look at all those pictures up there. On the other wall that you can't see are horses that I actually own. Do you know how much it would be worth to me to have a horse that won the Kentucky Derby, even though I wouldn't have been there, okay, I'd have stayed home, watched on TV, which is fine for me. Um, I've been to enough derbies, but to have a horse that won the Derby with my name on the picture and not just like imprinted that I actually had a share of, I wouldn't care if I ever got a check from my race horse for anything. That to me enough would be Wow, what a what a you know you know what a keepsake, what a, what 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 a thing to have if you're a collector of memorabilia and stuff like that, like I actually am. Um, so, well, all I can say is, John, next time, go with your instinct and don't. Oh man, I, you, you know, I looked at a couple of others and I'm like, how can I do it now when I missed out on a Derby and Breeders' Cup Classic winner? But you know what'll happen. Then you'll win another one, and I'll be saying it again. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wind up. I'm just trying to pick the right one, um, and I do hope that the ones in the UK become available to the people in the states because, like I said, I would love watching a horse that I had any kind of interest in in over there. And another thing that people don't understand, I I, I think, and you can talk a little about this. I owned racehorses for a while back in the. Um, I would say late 90s, early 2000s. I'm looking at my wind picture so I could remember exactly, but late 90s, early 2000s. And I decided to get out of the game. And the reason I decided to get out of the game, I'll tell you, is not, I, I was successful with cheaper horses. I won a lot of races, um, but I never was able to compete on the big stages. And for me, I said, you know, I love horse racing my entire life, 
But if I can't compete in the derbies and the Breeders' Cups and the group one and grade one races, I don't want to do it. I want to compete with the best or I'd rather just watch and cheer on TV and, you know, make my bets and enjoy, enjoy the races that way. And that's why I got out of it. So one of the things to me that I think is a very positive point about my racehorse is that it allows someone um, to compete at those levels that they might not be able to compete at if they're strictly on their own. So can you talk a little bit about, about those kind of opportunities? Well, John, you're really helping me out here. I mean, this is our mantra. You know, okay. you go racing in the UK, you know, even five years ago, you know, there was a, you know, microcosm on, you know, of owners, the big owners who owned all the big horses, super, you know, bought at the yearling sales for a million pounds and were winning all the races. And it's kind of seen you know, unfair. So this is the chance for people who can't afford those sums to own a share, to go on the journey, uh, to actually own and, you know, buy a winning picture and uh, with your certificate of ownership in there and come on that journey with us. Look, John, there's going to be some disappointments, but the more horses you buy, the better you buy, there's going to be those experience experiences. Right. The whole industry is talking about it. You know, in, there's been a lot of chat in the UK and Ireland that, you know, racing's dying or, or it's leveling out or whatever the phrase you want to use but this is the chance for people to do exactly as you describe to own a fractional share and to be part of that journey you know to be able to go to the yard and you know have a chat to john gosden and talk about what's what race he's got lined up for him um, to get all that digital experience and to go racing on the day at the top level with the top trainers that is our job and, 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 and it's a fascinating experience when you do get to, you, you know, go to a, you know, here we, most of our horses are kept on the, on, on the racetrack rounds. Okay. There it's a little different. They train in yards, but whether you go to the backside here into a barn and, and, and get to talk to a trainer and see what's going on or go to a yard over there, it's an experience that a lot of people on the front side of the racetrack never get to experience and see. And because of that, I think they have a lot of misconceptions about how horses are treated, how, how the game is run, um, the dedication involved of just about everyone who works on the backside, because I don't know any industry, and there are a lot of hardworking industries out there, and I do not mean to disparage any of them. But in our industry, the people that work around the horses work about as hard as in any business that I know. Um, and it becomes literally, it's not a job, it's a way of life working around horses and working on the backside. A lot of people on the front side don't get to see that. So what as a my racehorse owner or investor or whatever the term that you use, what do they get a chance to experience along those lines? Like you said, going, having a chat with a trainer, what else, well, what, else? what do they get to actually experience? Let me give you let me give an example. So um, Andrew Balding trains a uh, Dubawi Colt uh, that we bought at the Book One uh, Tadasaw uh, sales. You know they kindly said, "Listen, Jules, um, you know bring fifty to one hundred people in the morning, uh, come and watch the horse do some work um, at Kingsclear. Kingsclear is an absolutely stunning uh, yard, and it's just breathtakingly beautiful. And to see Dubawi, you know, come through the mist in the morning, I mean, it's just a feeling that you you can't replicate." So, you know, Andrew's super encouraging because I'm sure Joseph and, and John will be about um, allowing uh, owners to do that. You can't have hundreds of people in there, but we'll have a, a process that's fair to allocate that availability. Um, and we'll encourage all our owners to do that. We'll have one, uh, you know, we'll have a horrible sausage roll, you know, in true English fashion, ready for them. Right. <laughs> and a, a cup of tea in the morning. Um, but it's a, <laughs> it's, um, it's a great experience. And I, I, you know, and we'll, we'll be offering that for sure. And then all the way through to race day as well. So they can come to the races as an owner. Correct. Now we can't, you know, we can't get 250 people in the paddock. Of course. Um, so we'll right. have a lottery system where we randomly allocate people, um, you know, and, and deals with the race courses to allow them to get, you know, access. You know, when we when we started, we surveyed, you know, a lot of people who are racing fans and said, tell us what you don't like about racing. Right. One of the things they said was, you know, even as small owners, we don't like whether we get treated as, um, you know, when we come to the race course. And we're going to try and you know, improve that. Um, process as much as possible 
And also, you know, they want information. They want to feel as though they're learning something from the industry. They want to get that information. They don't want inside information or to feel that they know something they shouldn't, or I don't know, but they want to just feel part of it and have that experience, experience of ownership, uh, right. just as if you were a major owner. And that's what we, you know, the digital age, John, with, you know, 4G, 5G, everyone's got a supercomputer in their pocket. We can do right. that. And, 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 and I think getting back to that quote, uh, inside in, in information, I think you and I have been around the game to, lo- to know long enough that it has, that has much less value out there than, than a lot of people think it does. Think it does. Um, if, you, if there was information that, you know, in the wrong hands, I wouldn't be here with you now, John. I'd be on a beach somewhere. Exactly. Right, right. We, we'd be talking from Tahiti, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, 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 I agree. Uh, who's picking out your horses over there? So we have a global uh, uh, bloodstock manager in the form of Roddy Watchman, okay. who's a, a, a seasoned uh, bloodstock guy. Um, so he's uh, helped us, well, has picked our first three. And, you know, as we expand, we'll be working with some, some bloodstock agents, agents over here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's Roddy Roch- Watchman. Okay. Who you're familiar with. Now, when you go to buy a horse, um, and, and, and I think this is interesting, does my racehorse actually purchase that horse with their own money and then sell the shares, or do they have investors that are investing prior and, and, and are buying the horses with in the investors' money? No, we, we buy the horse first, and okay. then we syndicate it afterwards. Right. And that's quite a delayed process because of the SEC regulations in the US. But for us, you know, we, can, we can offer a horse for sale almost a day after buying it at, uh, at the Tattersalls or Goffs or wherever we are buying it. Um, yeah, we we uh, we buy first. Yeah, I mean, okay. in the US, I understand they do some indication of interest. You know, if we were to buy this horse, where you be, would you be interested? That sort of stuff. Um, right. But our, you know, our plans. That's the plan we're going to stick with in the UK. Right now, you, you know, it's it, it, it's a, it's a fact uh, of our game. You have to love it to be involved in it because most people that get into it as a money making um, venture have a hard time making money. Sure. Um, it's just the, the, the way the game is structured. So I think, I think it's safe to say, Jules, and, and correct me if you disagree, but I think it's safe to say that most of the people that have a passion for the game and own a lot of these horses, um, even at the highest levels, because I've done studies of, of, of some of the most successful owners in the United States that have won some of the biggest races, and you look at their racing portfolios, and even winning at, 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 at incredible rates, huge races, they're not making money in that aspect of, you know, of their lives. You know, they have other businesses where they're making them. So what is keeping them there? I think it's safe to say the passion and love of the sport. Um, talk a little bit about if you invest in my racehorse, okay? No matter what the level is, whether you invest $100, $1,000, 50000 um, odds are, the same as all those other owners, it's difficult to make money. What are we providing at my racehorse, or you providing to them at my racehorse, that makes that investment a worthwhile investment? So we don't refer to it as an investment for that reason, because if you think that's an investment, you know, you're going to disappoint. You should be buying other assets. Um, right. It's about that experience. It's about that thrill of ownership. You know, racing's been around in the UK for hundreds of years. And, you know, it's kind of in our blood. It's a tier one sport for us. It's one of the most watched, watched sports in the UK. Um, and people absolutely adore racing. And we're giving them a chance to go racing, as they always do. And tens of millions of people go racing every year in the UK. Um, but to go there with a fractional share and a top quality horse, having had that experience up to that, that point by visiting John Gosling Yards, getting all those updates, um, getting all that information, and just building that excitement that you know John so well of getting to that point where you're in a big Saturday group race. Um, that's what they're going to get. There's going to be some disappointments. I guarantee that probably more than there are wins, but right. you know, I think people know that, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, wagering and betting in the UK. Betting has been part of it for a long time. People know you get disappointed. You don't always win. And yeah, I mean, we, it's our job by, you know, buying the best blood stock as smartly as we can is to improve those odds. And yeah. More horses you buy at the top level, trained by the top people, you're going to increase your chances. Now, it's not going to turn it into a great investment, 
um, but it's going to increase the chances. You know, right. I, have a data, I have a background in, in data and financial markets, and we're going to work hard to improve our chances um, of, you know, bringing, you know, top quality wins and, you know, good places and group, group races to our, or what we call grade, grade races in the right. UK. Well, 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 Gosden, Balding, and O'Brien are going to increase the chances of, of, of that happening happening significantly right off the bat. So, um, if you if you you know throw some you know decent bloodstock in their direction, you, you're going to have some success. I mean, that's pretty much a, a, a gimme. It's more of a of of a when, not 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 an if. I would say. Exactly. Uh, now, how, how, how soon till um, we see the first My Racehorse run, run or hit the track? Any, any idea, any projection on that? So it's looking like, you know how racing is, John. Oh, you know, absolutely. Loaded question. I, you, yeah. you, you know, I understand. But it's looking like uh, the Tabawi Colt, which will um, be offered for sale very shortly in the next few days, will race in the 2000 Guineas day uh, on the 1st of May at Newmarket. Wow, right that's, that that's that's an exciting debut. That's an exciting debut. Anything special planned around that? If 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 he should be able to make that race and and and, and things go well, yeah, oh, definitely. We'll be trying to put on. We'll make sure we put on an event for those people that want to be there as best we can. You know, you, it's challenging, John, because you can't you go and put the box for ten thousand dollars and then the horse you know decides that we're going to race a week later. That's bad news. But as soon as we right. get clarification on that day. Uh, we'll be, you know, making sure our owners get a chance to come and race and uh, meet each other and enjoy that experience. Now, now, um, as you call them, the punters, um, we call them, we call them betters or, or, or whatever fans. But they would be very mad at me if I did not ask you, how how, how does Mr. Balding say that this one's training? That's a great question. John. <laughs> how do I answer that? Uh, look, the fact he's racing early. Um, is a good sign that you know he's quite excited about him you know the yard's excited about him you know now's the time to dream you know and andrew's a you know he's a straight talking guy he's um, not going to tell us what we want to hear because he thinks we're going to enjoy that process I've, ne I've never met him i've spoken to joseph o'brien met him i've had him on the show i've met john gosden several times and spoken at length, at length to him a couple of times i've never met mr Baldwin, so i don't know what he's like so um he, he's a workaholic by okay. all accounts uh you know when you go to the yard you'll see that that sort of in, uh, intense interest in what's going on in every minute detail you know we're excited I, what i'm going to say john we're excited about him you know is it the time to start brushing off the top hat if he has a you know a, a, a good race on the first of may yeah but let's see what happens i mean okay. he's, he's got the pedigree john i mean he's you know i mean you know the Dabawi, you know he's absolutely he's, Called the sire of sires at the moment right. by some, you know he's got every chance you know right well one of the things i've noticed about about my racehorse is that they, they they tend to purchase horses that are by um known known producers you know you, you know they really do they tend to gravitate to you know it's pr proven sires as opposed to and maybe that's just part of their business model because they know they're selling shares in these horses so you, you know they're, they're taking their best chance at success but i've noticed that they're they, they go after horses that are are, are are by proven proven sires as opposed to taking a chance on some yeah. you know sire that may or may not be a producer well we talked a bit little bit about you know improving those chances um you know right. statistically you've got a higher chance of doing well with a with a great pedig pedigree you're going to pay for it uh, right but that's that's you know there's these pedigrees you know and these stud fees uh, you know, indicate the success of uh, the progeny, and oh, I agree. That's what to increase that chances, those chances. Right. I, I I agree. And what exactly is your role for my racehorse over there? What is what what are you doing on a day to day basis over there? Uh, I'm doing this 100 percent of the time. I'm the managing okay. director of UK and Ireland, and uh, you know it's a dream job for me, John. You know, imagine 20 years ago when someone said to me, "You'll be in the industry, working in this industry, running, you know, potentially one of the biggest." syndicates in the world I and mean, it's a dream come true for me so right. i'm just so you know so excited about it well con congratulations and um I, I i thank you for coming on coming on uh, on the show and sharing this with some of the you know the people in the states and we've got some people because of some of our guests that watch um 
all, all, over in your neck of the woods as well. So uh, ho hopefully a lot of people will, will see this. Anything else you want to bring out about my resource or anything else you want to say before I let you go? I appreciate your time. I don't want to take too much of it. Um, I, 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 again, I thank you for coming on. So any, any, anything else you want to get out there? I want to make sure people are aware of. No, I think we've covered it really well. Just come on the journey with us, with us if you have the chance. It's going to be great. Okay, and you guys have a website that people can visit, right? It's myracehorse.com here in the States. I know that is the same there with a link to the UK. Yep, you, you load myracehorse.com. We have an app as well. It'll link straight to the UK and, and load that page. And you can, over the next couple of days, you'll be able to buy. And okay, okay. Um, thank you so much, everybody. My Racehorse, Jules Pittum. Um, you can find them on the internet. Well, I'll, I'll put a link to their website uh, at the bottom of this show. So you, every, everybody that wants to find it can find it easily. Um, I'll stop the recording now and then um, we will be able to say goodbye uh, off, off camera for a second. Okay. Thank you, John. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Nobody does it better.